live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I'm going to make a deal with you. I'm going to let you choose which game you want to buy tickets for. You get to go to either one of these two games, but you have to pay me the ticket price that's listed. We're assuming for both of these that the quality of the seats is exactly the same. So let's just say for argument's sake that for both of these games, you're sitting on the 50 yard line. Option one is that if you give me a hundred bucks, I'll give you a seat to the Big Ten Championship up in Indianapolis. Option two is that if you give me 120 bucks, I'll give you a seat to the game taking place on September 10th between Rutgers and Wagner. Wait a second, time out. That seems like a joke, right? I mean, if you take the second option, you're an absolute moron. Not only is that game significantly worse than option one, in terms of the quality of the facility and the attractiveness and importance of the game, but that option is more expensive. It's like asking if you'd rather pay $3 for a fresh slice of pizza or pay $5 for a slice of pizza that's soggy and has been sitting on the street in the rain for an hour. That seems like the dumbest pricing plan ever, right? Well, allow me to introduce you to the geniuses over at Vanderbilt. Because holy cow, if you want to talk about an absolutely dumb, mind-bogglingly stupid decision when it comes to how not to price your tickets, this is the prime example. In 2004, Vanderbilt had a, shall we say, interesting strategy for pricing their games, despite the fact that they are Vanderbilt football. And to say that it backfired in spectacular fashion would be an understatement. If there was ever a lesson on how not to price tickets for a game, Vanderbilt would be the main example. Because for being the gold standard of the conference from an academic standpoint, they didn't exactly use their brains with this one. And this is the story behind what has to be the dumbest ticketing plan, not just in Vanderbilt history, and not just in SEC history, but maybe even the entire history of the NCAA. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game that Vanderbilt was pricing people for, as well as why the game was being played at Vanderbilt in the first place. And as it turns out, this game was the most important game on the schedule, because the game we're talking about is their regular season finale on November 20th, 2004, against their in-state rival, the University of Tennessee. Big game every year for obvious reasons, as you want those in-state bragging rights. And how the series worked between the schools was like most series that aren't played at neutral sites. It alternates year to year on who gets to host the game. In odd number of years, the game would be held in Knoxville and would be hosted by Tennessee. In even numbered years, the game would be held in Nashville and would be hosted by Vanderbilt. As you can probably expect, especially every time the game was held in Nashville, it was a sellout. Vanderbilt Stadium, where the game was held when Vanderbilt hosted, only holds around 40,000 people. Combine the low capacity with the fact that this is Nashville, a city with a large Tennessee fan base, and the team never had trouble filling up the venue, even if the stadium was decked out in orange most of the time. However, in 1998, something interesting happened in the NFL that nearly a quarter century later still feels absolutely bizarre as to how an NFL team played here. But in 1998, the Tennessee Oilers played all of their home games at Vanderbilt Stadium. I'm not going to dive too much into the specifics of how this happened, simply because that's not the point of this video, and since there are plenty of articles and videos on it. But in short, after the Oilers moved to Tennessee in 1997, the Oilers were moved into a brand new stadium in downtown Nashville in 1999. The two seasons before that, however, they would play their games at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. This was a complete disaster. No one showed up to the games, it was a logistical nightmare, nothing about the Oilers felt like Tennessee's team, and the deal was so bad that after just one year, the Oilers decided that they needed to play in Nashville in 1998, because Memphis just wasn't working. So they played their games at Vanderbilt Stadium, and as part of the agreement for the Oilers playing their games there in 1998, when the new stadium, Adelphia Coliseum, opened up, Vanderbilt would be allowed to play some games there. Vanderbilt took the now-named Tennessee Titans up on that offer in 2000, when they decided to move their game against Tennessee off campus and to the Coliseum, playing at an NFL venue. And even though the result wasn't great for the Commodores on the field, as the Volunteers won 28-26, off the field, you couldn't deny the success that came because of this game. 
because in 2000, the game drew a sold out crowd of 68,360. Remember, Vanderbilt Stadium only holds around 40,000 people. Assuming this game would have been a sellout had it been played at Vanderbilt Stadium, this game drew more than 70% of what it would have drawn. It was a resounding success, to the point where when Vanderbilt got to host the game again in 2002, they decided to do it again and play at the Coliseum one more time. As head coach Bobby Johnson said on that game, even though he wasn't there when Vanderbilt last played Tennessee there in 2000, I've been told the game in 2000 provided a great atmosphere for college football. Our players enjoyed the experience and are looking forward to returning this year. The bad news was that on the field, the second verse was the same as the first, as the Commodores lost to the Volunteers. Actually, it was worse. Vanderbilt lost this one 24-0, getting shut out in this rivalry for the second straight season. The even worse news was that off the field, if you couldn't tell by the footage, this game did not generate the same success, as this was far from a sellout crowd. It was still better than what the game would have drawn at full capacity at Vanderbilt Stadium, but not by much. The game only drew 47,210 fans, and the atmosphere was not good. Maybe it was the novelty aspect of the first game versus the second game. Maybe it was the fact that Tennessee entered the game in 2000 as a top 25 team and entered on a five-game winning streak versus 2002, when they entered outside the top 25 and just 4-4 four four in their last eight games. Maybe it was the fact that the 2000 game was the final game of the regular season for Tennessee versus 2002 when it was not, as they ended the season against Kentucky and still had a game to go after their Vanderbilt game. Maybe it was a combination of a bunch of different things. Whatever the case, the second time around, it did not work. And that's when Vanderbilt made the decision to bring the game back to campus. For the 2004 installment, for the first time in six years, for the first time in this millennium, and for the first time since 1998, the Tennessee Vanderbilt game would be taking place on campus at Vanderbilt Stadium. And Vanderbilt officials were thrilled about bringing the game back on campus. Vice Chancellor David Williams asked head coach Bobby Johnson if he wanted to do this, and he gave an emphatic yes answer. As Johnson said, I'm glad it's back on campus, and I think our players are too. But you know who wasn't happy that the game was back on campus, based on what Vanderbilt did next? The fans. Because the ticket prices for this game were laughably and comically bad. Before I go any further, let's show you a comparison of what ticket prices are like for other sporting events in the SEC. If you wanted to go to any Florida home game down in Gainesville, it will cost you 25 bucks. If you want to go to any Georgia home game down in Athens, it will cost you 32 bucks. Want to go to a Tennessee game? It will cost you 38 to 45 bucks depending on the quality of the opponent. The game against Alabama will be a higher price than the non-conference game against a cupcake. Want to go to an Alabama game down in Tuscaloosa? It's going to cost you 40 bucks. And if you want to go to the big one and wanted to go down to Atlanta to watch the SEC championship and see who gets to play in the Sugar Bowl and maybe have a shot at winning the BCS, it's going to cost you 50 bucks. Those are your price points for the other football games around the SEC. And before I go any further, I want to emphasize something. Vanderbilt football absolutely sucks. The 2004 season was a disaster for them. Entering this game against Tennessee, just as they always are, they were the lapping stock of the conference. They enter this game with a record of 2-8, and eight, and one of those two wins was against a Division I AA opponent in Eastern Kentucky. They were 1-6 in the conference, giving them the worst conference record of any school. And in this rivalry, the last time they won was back in 1982. For some perspective on how long ago that was, the biggest show in America in 2004, without a doubt, was American Idol. In 2004, the winner of American Idol was Fantasia Barino. She was not even born the last time Vanderbilt beat Tennessee. When she sang at the finale in her song, I Believe, I've been waiting all my life for this moment to arrive, she wasn't talking about achieving her dreams of becoming a singer. She was talking about Vanderbilt finally beating Tennessee in a football game, because Tennessee had the third longest active winning streak against one opponent. So keep all of that in mind. Vanderbilt is bad, and the ticket prices seem pretty reasonable for other events throughout the conference. So take a wild guess. How much do you think Vanderbilt was charging for this game? Keep in mind, I'm not talking about resale or scalpers or anything like that. 
This is directly from the Vanderbilt ticket office. How much would this game have set you back? Give up? It was $55. $55. I'm sorry, what? You're telling me that this game between a Vanderbilt team that is the worst in the SEC and a Tennessee team with nothing to play for being played at a venue that's the worst in the SEC costs $55? It costs more than the Iron Bowl? It costs more than the Florida-Georgia game? It costs more than the freaking SEC championship? $55 to watch Vanderbilt football, making them quite easily the most expensive ticket in the SEC? That's absolutely absurd. Who was the genius that thought of that one? If your goal is to get money through ticket sales by pricing out Tennessee fans, how is this going to help? It's not like Vanderbilt fans have money and Tennessee fans don't. And even if that was the case, what Vanderbilt fan is going to want to brave a cold late November day to watch a team that stinks and hasn't won in this series since before Michael Jackson's Thriller album came out? You priced out literally everyone here. And to have the audacity, and I don't even want to say the guts because it's just asinine, but to have the audacity to charge more money to watch 2-8 Vanderbilt than they're charging for the SEC championship. No one is going to want to pay that kind of money, especially when you realize that adjusted for inflation, that's a get-in price minimum of over $86 today. For freaking Vanderbilt football. Absurd. As you can probably expect, this move backfired in absolutely spectacular fashion. Vanderbilt received more criticism from the local media for this than when they changed their logo this past offseason. It was really bad. To make matters worse, Vanderbilt hired a committee to determine what the price point should be. Then the committee made their suggestion to Vice Chancellor David Williams, who signed off on it. And only a few days before the game did he realize, oh crap, these are the highest ticket prices in the SEC. We had no idea. Let me get this straight. You spent money on hiring a committee to do research, and they didn't do one bit of research? On how much ticket costs elsewhere? I thought you guys were the smart ones in the conference. I thought you guys knew how to do research. That's like if I'm on eBay and I'm trying to sell the autograph of a third string offensive lineman who played one season in the NFL and I charge more than the people selling Bo Jackson autographs because I never stop to think about how much other autographs go for. And then for Williams to say on the sluggish ticket sales, we did think that we would actually have our fan base in there is so insulting because not only does your product stink, but your ticket prices stink. Your fan base is smart. And then the geniuses at Vanderbilt never thought to change the price one day once they realized this information. But at this point, they just wanted to keep digging their hole and ticking off the entire football loving state of Tennessee in the process. Somehow, in what should have been the easiest sellout of the year, the Vanderbilt Tennessee game did not sell out. How Vanderbilt managed to screw that one up absolutely baffles me. But turns out, people had no problem staying at home and watching the game on TV instead of getting ripped off of $55, not even counting parking and concessions. The game drew a crowd of 32,312. That's it. Just 32,000 people showed up for this rivalry game, which was actually a pretty good contest, as Tennessee won 38-33 in a high-scoring affair. It should have been a sellout. But the amount of money that Vanderbilt lost by not having a full stadium, when all they had to do was literally not charge more money than the SEC championship was charging, was not good, to say the least. So what's the moral of the story here? If you're trying to figure out anything important financially, for the love of all things good and pure, do some research. If you do just one Google search, you're doing more than whatever Vanderbilt was doing back in 2004. If you're going to charge money for tickets and your event is, objectively speaking, worse and less prestigious than another event, don't charge more money than the other event is charging, because I promise you, it's not going to work out the way that you think it will. In 2004, Vanderbilt showed that they lacked a fair amount of talent on the field. But off the field, when it came to ticketing, somehow, they were even worse. Because in the SEC, it just means more as in more money to watch Vanderbilt football than the SEC championship.
Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.